Uh, we're going to go to Luke chapter 9, and uh, if you guys got your Bibles, please feel free to turn there, and if you don't, that's okay, I'll, I'll read to you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Luke chapter 9, we are really going to, or what I feel like the Lord is wanting to share, or what he asked me to share, the primary that we're going to hang on to is uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 23. But I'm going to read uh, 9, chapter 9, Luke chapter 9, verses 18 through 27, just to bring a little bit of context to it. Uh, I'm going to read to you guys out of, we'll do the New Living Translation. Uh, again, you guys are probably familiar with it by now. I like to read a bunch of different versions. Um, I feel like they just bring me a different perspective sometimes with a different verbiage and the way that things are laid out. And so some of this is put together out of the New Living Translation. Some of it's put together out of the King James Version. Um, some of it, you know, I, I pulled one scripture even. I like the way that it was worded out of the complete Jewish Bible. And uh, so I'm going to read right here out of the New Living Translation. Again, uh, Luke chapter 9, verses 18 through 27. So one day as Jesus was alone praying, he came over to his disciples and he asked them, Who do people say? I am. Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist and some say Elijah, and others say you are one of the other ancient prophets risen from the dead. Then he asked them, who do you say that I am? Peter replied, you are the Messiah sent from God. Jesus warned them not to tell anybody about this, for I, the Son of Man, must suffer many terrible things. He said, I will be rejected by the leaders and the leading priests and the teachers of religious law. I will be killed, but three days later, I will be raised from the dead. Then he said to the crowd, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must put aside your selfish ambition, shoulder your cross daily, and follow me. If you try to keep your life for yourself, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find true life. And how do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose or forfeit your own soul in the process. If a person is ashamed of me and my message, I, the Son of Man, will be ashamed of that person when I return in my glory and in the glory of my Father and the holy angels. And I assure you that some of you standing here right now will not die before you see the kingdom of God. So I wanted to read that, you know, collective set of passages just kind of to get you guys to understand uh, you know, Jesus is having a conversation here with his, his disciples. And uh, it's, it's amazing to me how some of these things are put together. I just love it, you know. It says that Jesus was off praying, and then he came and asked. And how many times are we off praying, <laughs> and we go, I'll be praying, and I go to my spouse, and I'm like, what do you think about this? I like to call it, I like to call her sometimes the second Holy Spirit. Um, sometimes she lets me run with it, and sometimes she gets me back on track. <laughs> um, however, I think it's funny that Jesus was praying, and then he went to his disciples, and he asked them a question. Who do men say that I am? And they had a bunch of different, various answers, and, you know, Peter said, you are the Messiah. And, uh, you know, the, the part that I really want to stick to here is going to be verse 23, and he said, he said this to the crowd. So he had this conversation going on with him and the disciples, but then he said to the crowd, and it makes me think, was there other people there, or was this just him and his disciples? He said to the crowd, if any of you want to be my follower, you must put aside your selfish ambition, shoulder your cross daily, and follow me. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about picking up our cross daily, and following him. But of course, <laughs> of course, as I'm reading this stuff, so much stuff happens when, when, when we spend time reading, reading the word of, of Yahweh, when we spend time reading the word of God. Um, so much stuff happens. And I got to the end of this at verse 27, and it says, I assure you that some of you standing here right now will not die before you sing the kingdom of God. And I thought about that. And I think about that. I, I, I read things in the Bible. I read things in the scriptures that cause me to just ponder them. Like, I don't really have an answer. Like, what does that mean? Some of you standing right here are 
not going to die before you see the kingdom of God. And uh, I feel like this morning the Lord gave me just this tiny little itty bitty, you know, for some of y'all it's probably no big deal, but for me it was everything. And he said, uh, he showed me, he said, John the Revelator, (laughs) John the Revelator, he wrote, uh, you know, Revelation. How did he do that? The Father took him and allowed him to see what was going on in the kingdom when he was on the island of Patmos and he was able to share the things that he's seen in the kingdom. And so anyway, it was just a question that I had inside of myself, you know, Father, how are the people going to see the kingdom before they die? And he just showed me how he was able to show John, you know, and then there's a couple of other guys, you know, um, Elijah and even Enoch. There's people that were translated you know, it's hard to try to articulate um, God sometimes because like I was saying earlier, he lives outside of the constraints of time. See, I'm in this little tiny spot right now in a timeline, and he not only is in this with me, but he's in the pre-this timeline and the after-this timeline. And for me to fathom that sometimes is hard for me to wrap my head around. And so he was just showing me that he, uh, he allowed John to see the kingdom, you know, He's seen the war. He's seen the, the breaking of the seals. He's seen the bowls. I mean, he's seen the sea of glass. You know, he actually seen the throne of God. And then he was able to somehow, uh, I don't even know how he was able to pin, pin it to paper. You know what I mean? How do you articulate that which you have seen that is indescribable onto a piece of paper to relay to us uh, 2,000 something odd years later? It's just amazing if you try to put it You know, if you try to think about it, like, this is in the realms of impossibilities. So, get back on track. The main focus, the main scripture that we're going to talk about really is uh, 9.23, Luke 9.23. And 23, it says, in order for you to be my follower, you must put aside your selfish ambition, shoulder your cross daily, and follow me. So, um, it is not how beat up your Bible is. It's not how perfect your family is. It's not how much money you have. It's not how nice you look. It's not even if you have a fish symbol on your car or if you uh, wear a cross. None of that really matters. I mean, that's all cool. But uh, Jesus called you, he called me, he called all of us to follow him. Um, Not just to learn about him, not just to be a good person, but to truly be a disciple, to truly be a student. And, you know, I like to think that I'm a student Um, And he shows me so many times where I am succeeding, and he also showed me so many times where I'm failing. Um, You know, we all have maybe a different concept of what a student is or what it is that we're even supposed to be looking at and studying, you know. Uh, I went through years and years and years and years of just reading his words, and and that's awesome. Jesus' words are great, (laughs) way great. That's a good model to follow. And then over the course of the last couple of years, the Father's been asking me to really look and evaluate at how he lived, where he went, what he did, when he did what he did. And it's like he's allowing me to go into another layer. So I had this, uh, this understanding or this revelation of, of Jesus through his words. You know what I mean? And I thought I had it mastered. I mean, I would argue with anybody over anything that, that Jesus said or didn't say, or it, it was, I kind of got puffed up a little bit, for lack of better terms. And and the Lord said, let me show you what you don't know. And I thought, oh, oh, wow. <laughs> That's pretty humbling. Um, it, but at the same time, it's, it's an honor. It's an honor. Um, I, I got the opportunity to repent um, for pride and for arrogance. Uh, because, you know, knowledge puffs one up with pride. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but I like to study. I, I fill myself with knowledge and information and sometimes I found, find myself touting this information as if I have something that you don't. And what I fail to recognize and realize is that you have access to the same Holy Spirit that I have, and it's only by His grace that He has allowed me to see some of the things that He's allowed me to see. Because, you know, the Jewish people, for instance, had a, had a veil pulled over their eyes. It's not necessarily their fault they don't recognize the Mashiach as the Savior. <laughs> And also, you know, us Gentiles have had the veil pulled over our eyes in some areas. Um, And I think the Lord is humbling both them and us 
to bring us unilaterally and collectively together because there are many of them that are the body of Christ, just like there's many of us that are the body of Christ. And go on with the same platform that this world is trying to operate in right now as far as them and us. And there really isn't a them and us. Because collectively our enemy, you know, is not flesh and blood. And so really it's all we. And we can come to that understanding we're really going to make some headway. Kind of reminded me of the husband and wife pulling the card individually. <laughs> so anyway, um, to truly be his disciple is to actually lose or give up your very own life for him so that we will find true life. Okay, How do we live a life fully surrendered to God? What does that look like? What does it mean to take up my cross daily? Those are some pretty simple questions. And I found myself ask, answering my own questions. And then I feel like the Holy Spirit began to share a few things with me. And, uh, and I actually went down some of these small little roads. <laughs> so I've oftentimes heard people refer to this passage of Scripture as uh, some sort of ongoing suffering in life. You know, if you think about carrying your cross daily, you know, what does that look like? And I myself actually have even went down that road and uh, have tried to relate that to difficult times or to illnesses. You understand what I'm saying? When I think about shouldering a cross to carry daily, I see that as a burden. You know what I'm saying, for lack of better terms. And, and even in, in Yeshua's day, uh, when that was a burden, you know, they was required to only carry, I've learned, just one piece of the cross, not necessarily two pieces of the cross, so they would carry one piece of the cross on their shoulders, and they had poles pretty stationary. They would carry one piece of the cross with them, and that was a burden, and uh, that was a one-way that was a one-way track. <laughs> when it was a way the Romans used to humiliate people, um, to put them on display for what was about to happen, and so I had this conception that uh, you know shouldering the cross is is almost a form of humiliation. Um, you know, with 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 financial difficulties sometimes or, or the loss of a loved one. Um, you know, I've, I've been down some pretty dark and twisted roads. Um, you know, one for an example, I, I know that you guys know that uh, Susie and I lost a son that was three years old in 2001, and I just thought that that was, that was just my burden to carry. You know what I mean? And the Lord, over much time, over much grace, over much loved ones, has showed me that that, that wasn't necessarily the truth. <laughs> But that wasn't a burden for me to carry. And so he's had to renew my mind And uh, in some areas. You know, some people just can consider that uh, that is their cross. That that's their cross that they have to shoulder daily, a burden that they have to carry. And that's not what Jesus meant, you know. Uh, so Luke 9.23, it says, And he was saying to them, If anyone wishes to come after me, they must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. When we think of this as an issue of denying oneself, think about that. Denying one's self. Denying oneself. That just isn't, it's something that's pretty foreign to us as Americans. It might not be foreign to us in a third world country where we don't have everything at our fingertips. Um, we live in a microwave society actually right now where we want everything right now. I mean, I have a business, and people call me, and they want gutters on their house right now. And when I tell them I can't get there for a month, they're like, well, I'll call somebody else. And I'm like, well, let me know how that works out for you. I mean, what else do you say? What else do you say? <laughs> you put them on the waiting list, and you'll get there when you can get there. But we've, we've become so accustomed to getting everything that we want right now that we have no, no concept of self-denial. So to deny himself, okay, uh, the Lord was showing me this. I've, I've been in states, I'm, I don't know where you guys have been, but I've been in states of poor, poor, pitiful me, you know, maybe some states of depression, for lack of better terms, you know, having these little pity parties. And the Lord sometimes will get out his graceful stick <laughs> and use it on me. And he says, when are you going to stop wallowing that? And I find myself going, self Stop. Have you ever talked to yourself like that? <laughs> Have you ever had to tell yourself to stop 
Stop acting like that. Stop being rude to these people. Show a little bit of grace. Show a little bit of mercy. I mean, I was shown grace. I was shown mercy. You know what I'm saying? Stop being so hard on other people. Self, get it together. <laughs> that sounds weird to say out loud. <laughs> but uh, I, know I'm, I, I know I'm not the only one. So we tend to think of denying ourselves from something. From something. You know? Denying yourself from something. That's what I've noticed. I shouldn't say all Americans, but that's what I've noticed myself. I feel like if I withhold something from myself, that is denying myself. You understand? Like, uh, I worked out for a while and was eating a lot of chicken, and now I've stopped eating chicken. Let me tell you what's good. Reese cups. <laughs> I've been eating a lot of Reese cups lately. <laughs> and uh, uh, and, I, and I'm, I'm starting to go the other way on the scale, and and, and I feel myself going, man, I need to deny myself to get the results that I want. So in my head, I need to lay off the Reese cups. You know what I mean? I need to deny myself. A lot of times in our terms of, uh, you know, our thought processes, it's to deny ourselves is to, not, to deny something, not really fully understanding what deny ourself actually is. So... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Jesus is talking about ceasing to make self first in life and in actions. He's talking about ceasing to make me number one priority. And I'm working on that. Um, I like to hunt and I like to fish. And I would be selfish with that. For you guys that don't know, this is opening weekend for deer season for youth there's a bunch of utes running out there with rifles shooting deers right now. And, uh, and this is traditionally a time where I would find some youth and their adult parent and take them hunting. You know, just to fulfill myself a little bit. You know, I kind of, I'm not really hunting. And if I'm helping them hunt, then I get fulfilled in that too. And so I found this way to kind of manipulate <laughs> uh, to get my way. And, uh, the Lord, even before that, I wouldn't even, I would be hunting right now, even without a youth. I would wear all my hunter orange and be bow hunting because you can still hunt with a bow. And so there's rifles going off all over the place, boom, 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 but I would be hunting still with a bow. And the Lord gradually, through his grace, helped me to take other youths hunting. And now here we are, it's youth weekend, and I haven't even put a piece of camouflage on. And so over time, he has shown me how to stop putting myself First, actually, I was at a wedding last night. I probably shouldn't say. <laughs> but that wasn't my first priority on where I wanted to be on a Saturday evening during deer season. <laughs> but the Lord helped me to put aside myself, my selfish ambitions, because actually what was more beneficial for him and his kingdom was the development of relationship. It was important for me to be there, for me to support them, and for me to tie the broken bonds of, of family. You know what I'm saying? Even though I would like to go, not interested, family. <laughs> and that, that's not true in all scenarios, but you get what I'm saying? The Lord over time, through his grace and his mercy, uh, just collectively with walking with him, once upon a time, it was not an, I didn't care what anybody wanted. I was doing what I wanted. And he allowed me to, for lack of better terms, manipulate the situation so that I could be fulfilled, but I gave him a little also. You know, now I'm trying to help other people while I go hunting, and now it's to the point where hunting really isn't that important. So, uh, you know, what Jesus is talking about here is pick up our cross and follow him daily. It's ceasing to make ourselves first in life and in actions. Um. I like this now, but once upon a time, I wouldn't even, I'm going to say this sentence, and to y'all, it ain't a big deal, but once upon a time, I couldn't even hardly bear to stand to say it, is uh, Jesus, not me, must be at the center of our life. Hmm. Hmm. I thought I was pretty important. It's my life, right? The Lord gave breath in my lungs so that I can live however I want to. I should get to do whatever I want, how I want, when I want, where I want, with who I want. I, 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 me, 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 me. Huh. 
And here's, you know, Jesus saying, if anybody wants to be my follower, they must deny themselves, pick up their cross, and follow me daily. That was another hard pill for me to swallow, that whole daily thing. I mean, I don't mind picking up my cross and coming to church on Sunday. That's cool. (laughs) But Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and definitely Saturday should be mine. What's wrong with that? That's fair, right? (laughs) Not exactly. (laughs) Not exactly. So this part-time, this part-time believer, (laughs) it's uh, it's gotten, it's not it's not hard now that I'm on this side of it. (laughs) But when I was on that side of it, it was hard. It was hard to, to 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 die to myself. It was hard to crucify myself. I I knew the words but I didn't have that experiential relationship of living those words out. And so um, our Father in his infinite wisdom uh, has the ability of letting us live things out so that we really understand and connect with the words that he said. So notice what he said. If anyone wishes to come after me, I'm just going to say, I don't mean I'm not like he's not in a bottle like genie in a bottle, but... I want to, uh, you know, I want to go after Jesus. I want to go after who he is. I want to go after the Savior of my soul. I want to go after the creator of everything. You know, he was before everything. All of creation is created for him and through him and by him. You know what I'm saying? I want to go after that. I want to learn about this stuff. Um, he said that I must, I must, not that I might, that I must, I absolutely must, this is not optional, that I must deny myself. And uh, I must take up for myself the cross and follow him again uh, daily, follow him daily. And I got the daily part mastered now, I, I think, but now he's even going even deeper, and it's not... Because in my head, in my little finite brain, I think that if I get up and spend 10 minutes with the Lord in the morning, I gave him the day. Mm, Not exactly. (laughs) Now he's got me working on hour by hour. And believe it or not, there's a lot of times where I have to work on minute by minute. Because I don't know if any of y'all ever drove on the highways. But let me tell you what. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Minute by minute on some of this stuff. The Lord's like, oh, here's an opportunity to deny yourself. And I'm like, I'm going to deny them this lane. I'm going to deny them this lane. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's uh, pretty wild. So <laughs> uh, the way of the cross, the, the way of the cross, I'm sorry, the way of the cross is the way of death. Now that could be, I, I hope that, you know, if somebody cuts that out, just that part, that could be a really catastrophic thing here out on the internet in the world. The way of the cross is the way of death. It is the way of self-denial. It is to crucify myself daily and to follow him. Jesus denied himself daily. Um, that, that amazes me. It amazes me if you think about uh, uh, um, an omnipresent, omnipotent God of everything put himself, wrapped himself in flesh and then lived in the world. Um, selflessly selflessly to to show us to be a model for us how to live that the impossibility of loving your enemy is possible <laughs> that the impossibility of people taking advantage of him it's still you're, we can still love them these are pretty tough pills to swallow huh that if a man strikes you on one cheek, that you can turn your other cheek. I don't know about that. That would definitely be a millisecond by millisecond dying to myself. Uh, you know? Uh, in John five nineteen, Jesus only did what he seen the Father do and he only said what he heard the Father say. That's a goal in which I'm trying to get to that point. There's still a lot of um, myself mixed up in that of trying to only, only say what I hear the Father say. Only do what I see the Father do. You know, when we do only those things, we are extremely successful. 
you could say are, are, I know that not everybody in here has like, you know, Scott's ministry. You know what I'm saying? We could say, we could say that if we only did what the Father said, if we only said what he said and only did what he did, our ministries would be unfathomably successful because it's about his will and his plans and his purposes. And I'm, I'm, I'm sad to say that I'm learning that a lot of times my will and his will aren't the same. There's, there's, there's humans that I do not like, and he loves. He loves them. And I'm like, are you sure about that? Are you sure? Anywho, uh, maybe I'm just throwing myself under the bus, but <laughs> uh, Jesus only did, he came to this earth and he, it astonishes me, he only did what he's seen his father doing. If my son only did what I did, he'd be in trouble. You know, the whole do what I say, not as I do. Have you got any parents ever hear that? <laughs> oh my goodness. When we think what my cross is or how... Am I going to handle this? We aren't to think about hurts, pains, or things, okay? We're not supposed to think about objective things when that. When he, when he talks about uh, my cross, what this is for me to pick up my cross and follow him daily, he's talking about relationship. Think about that. He's talking about relationship. If you was to pull that word cross out and say, I want you to pick up your relationship daily and follow me, it brings it into a whole different context. Are you tracking with me? And so we're talking, about, we're talking about the cross here. I want you to think about this too, okay? You can say, uh, you could say our relationship with God would be this part of the cross, which is love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And the second part of the cross is loving your neighbor as yourself. Think about this, okay? So uh, when we think about my cross, we're talking about relationships. Relationship with the Father first, then relationship with humans second. A lot of times, I used to get that mixed up. You know, I, I like to have relationships with humans and then try to have a relationship with God. It never worked out. It never worked out. Because he has this amazing ability to know who is, um, who is ripe, I guess, for the pickings, what fruit is ready to be harvested, for lack of better terms, and what fruit isn't. And I got an amazing skill for picking the not ripe fruit that wasn't ready to be picked, and then I pluck it and actually hurt it you know what i'm saying when you shake a tree and it's ready they just fall off you know what i'm saying if you go and pick a pear and, and it's not ready you know and then take a bite out it's nasty it's nasty Ew. so uh what we're talking about here is relationship we're talking about a life that is so surrendered to jesus christ that he is at the heart he is at the core and he is at the center of our thinking of our actions and of our everything Again, I know it's easy for you guys, but it's really hard for me to get up and go, what do you want to do today, Lord? Because I get up and I'm like, thank you, Lord, for the day. Where's the coffee? What are we doing today? How can I shimmy my schedule around so I can go fishing? How can I shimmy my schedule around so I can go hunting? Who do I need to call today? I can call them tomorrow. I'm already like... Two seconds after I thank the Lord for today, already forgot about what he wants me to do, what he wants to do. Does he want to share something with me? Should I share something with him? The cares of this world are crazy, crazy. And don't, don't, don't get me wrong, there are seasons. There are seasons. My, my little ones ain't little no more. My little ones are big and can pretty much handle themselves for the most part. And I get to watch every day on how I failed. <laughs> the Lord's going to make up for that. I really believe it. You know, that they see a lot of good things, but there's seasons. You know what I mean? Um, I, I think about my wife, you know, when our kids were young, you know. There wasn't a lot of time for her to spend with the Lord. Her priority was raising our little ones. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I remember a time uh, when I didn't have the freedom and the luxury of, of thinking about how I can go fishing or hunting. You know, the first, the first 20-something years of my life, it was on the grind. It was on the grind. You get up and take care of the kids, I'll get up and provide. And there wasn't a lot of time, you know what I'm saying, for the Lord. However, the seasons are shifting. And now Susie can spend a little bit more time with the Lord, and I can spend a little bit more time with the Lord. But we do this thing, and we're like, oh, I did so good in those first 20 years, I deserve this time for myself. 
I deserve it. I deserve a little satisfaction. <laughs> so I'm going fishing. And the Lord's like, whoa, 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 here, dude. What about me? <laughs> so uh, our relationship with him, our relationship with, with Christ, our re- relationship with Yeshua, it, it's the relationship with him that does, it determines everything about our life. L- please listen to that. Listen to that. Our relationship with him determines everything about our life. This day I set before you life and death. Pick that which you will. And I roll with my own thoughts in my own life. I didn't know it, but I was picking a little bit of death. I mean, if you would have told me I was picking death, I would have been like, no way, I'm going fun. I'm having fun. I'm going to the club. <laughs> little did I know I was picking death. And uh, when I make him the center of everything, I put myself in his will, actually. And, and, and he works with us. When, when I was a baby Christian, it was really difficult. Now, now that I'm a little bit older, I, I really understand that when I'm in line with his will and his purposes, I am fulfilled within myself in a way that I can't even explain. So I, I can go to work, I can go to work, and, and, and I can make a lot of money. A lot. I am miserable when I do that. Can you believe that? I'm absolutely miserable. You make money hand over fist. The world says that's what success is. That makes me miserable. I can go to the food pantry on a Friday and, and work for free for like eight, nine hours, and when I leave, I feel fulfilled. I feel like I did something special. I feel like I, I encountered somebody. I, you know what I'm saying? It's crazy. It's the same thing. It's labor. It's work. But one, I get what the world says is success when actually it crushes me, and the other one, I get what the world says is failure, but actually it's success. So what the world says is amazing, God's like, I don't know. I'm pretty sure there's a scripture that says, if you love the world, <laughs> um, you can't love him. And I paraphrased it. You guys can get me for it later, but I'm pretty sure if you look for it, you'll find it. And so I'm supposed to, I'm, I'm a foreigner, I'm an alien, alien in, in this world, and you know, I'm not really from this place, and eventually I'm going to go back to the Father and really, I'm just here. I'm just, you know, I got, I, got a good, I got a good friend who loves to say training for reigning. <laughs> I'm just here to train how to reign. I'm just here. I'm just being trained right now how to rule and reign with the Father in eternity. And I mean, we can go a million different depths with that also. I mean, some of us are great. Some of us just want to just get, I just want to get to the streets of gold. I just want to get in. No, I'm not, I'm not. I'm trying to get way past that. I'm trying to go like I want to be in his lap, and we can have that. We can have that. Um. <laughs> so our relationship with him determines everything about our life. It's a deliberate, willful surrender of one's life every single day. He said, "Take up your cross daily and follow me." <sighs> if you believe that Yeshua or Jesus Christ is your personal Savior, and you choose to follow Him and walk obediently with Him, that's not a decision that you've made just once. It's not a decision that you've made just one time. I I hate to burst my bubble, but it wasn't a, I confess you as my Lord and Savior, now I can live like a rock star. You've forgiven me of my sins, past, present, future, I can do whatever I want now. I'm good. I'm good. You know, I repented once, I'm, I'm good. I don't got any more changes. Your blood atoned for my sins, and I can do what I want. Mm, not exactly. <laughs> not exactly. So when we trust him as our Lord and Savior, once and for all in one decision, however, following him and obeying him, that's a daily issue in your life and in mine. It's a daily issue. And uh, I wish that I had it mastered, but I promise I'm going to get a bunch more opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. So when he speaks of following him, when he speaks of following me, this is a daily, sometimes hourly, and even a minute-by-minute decision or a choice to surrender our lives to him. Now, for all you men out there, you know, I like to think that I'm a big, strong guy. I, can, I could hold my own with several. 
I'm awesome. And so that word surrender, it just don't jive with my vocabulary. You know what I'm saying? Like, surrender, uh uh-uh. Fight to the death, uh uh-huh. Okay, well, you asked for it. (laughs) He's he's undefeated, I can tell you that. He's undefeated. So uh, we respond to the circumstances in our lives based off of our relationship to and with him. I, I, I like to think that, you know, there's not a whole lot of people in here that are, you know, under 13. <laughs> there's not a whole lot of people in here that are under 13 years old. So you should be able to look back at your life and you should be able to see the progress or lack thereof of surrendering your life to him. You know what I mean? Think about some of the decisions that you've made in your life and you had to deal with the, uh, uh, you could call them consequences or you could call them blessings. You know what I'm saying? You make decisions based off of his will. You, you, you have success. You have gratification. You have fulfillment. It, it's awesome. And you, you go through life making decisions based off of, off of my own selfish ambition. I have frustrations. I have brokenness. I have broken relationships. I'm, I'm financially uh, crippled. Um, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. So my cross and your cross as believers, it's the same. It's the same cross for each and every one of us. It's relationship. That's what we need to pick up daily. That's what we need to follow him with. We need to chase him every single day with relationship. Father, how can I come into deeper relationship with you? Jesus. Yeshua. How can I have deeper relationship with you? It's such an easy question. And oh, how I struggle to hear the answer. Lord, what do you want me to do today? Gone. Coffee, work, friends, family, phone calls, text messages, Facebook, emails. (laughs) Oh, man. Our cross is the same. It's not only relationship, but it's also that we choose daily to surrender our will, our ways, and our emotions. Reality check. You mean surrender my emotions to you? I thought emotions were my reality. Absolutely not. Emotions are only an indicator of that which is. It's not a truth. Your emotions are not your truths. I might feel mad, but that's not a truth. (laughs) I might feel rageful, but that's not the truth. I might feel angry. They are indicators of of our beings, but when we let them control us, we're in for a bad we're in for a bad, 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 bad time. Bad time. Um, I mean, I'm going to get to read it here in a minute, but I really used to struggle. I really used to struggle. Really, 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 really used to struggle with anger, hate, and rage. I used to be a rage monster. I did, I did fight a lot. Um, I learned pretty young how to manipulate situations and control people with fear. And... As I began walking with the Lord, he said, that's not going to work. And have you ever tried to manipulate or fight with God? You ever try to control him with fear? (laughs) It don't work. (laughs) He gracefully, um, he gracefully asked me to give up anger, hate, and rage for peace, love, and joy. Conceptually, that sounds amazing, but to actually do it was hard. Because not only is, uh, you know, anger, hate, and rage the complete opposite of of that is peace, love, and joy, it also required humility, and I had a pride issue. You know, I had to swallow my pride and trust him that what he was doing was wanting to restore my soul, restore the broken pieces of myself that I didn't even know were broken. And it was a part of deliverance in my life that was so amazing. It was so amazing. And there's even, there's even a couple people in here right now that still struggle with that, with anger, hate, and rage. And the Father is asking you to lay it down at the cross and not pick it back up. And it's not going to be easy. I wish that it was. Um, but it's going to be something... It'll be easy to lay it down at the cross, but it's hard to not pick it back up. 
Because as soon as something crazy goes sideways in your life, it's a default reaction. Go to the anger. Go to the rage. If I'm rageful, I can instill fear, and they'll do what I want them to do. Peace, love, and joy. <laughs> and uh, I just want to encourage. I just want to encourage people do it. It's worth it. He can do it. He can. He can. He's the master. He's the master at restoring the brokenness. I promise. Um. So. <laughs> Our cross as believers, it's the same. You know, it's relationship, first with the Father, then with humans. I keep saying that. I mean, I'm struggling with humans. <laughs> I love humans. I speak those things that are not as if they were. <clears throat> so, uh, man, thank you, Father. We have to choose with all that we are to follow our Lord and Savior, you know, Yeshua HaMashiach, or Jesus the Christ. The Christ to follow him every day, no matter what it costs or what it requires. And a lot of times I feel like it's going to cost me something because I have to give something away. Think about it. Think about it. For, for, me, to give, for me to give this away, it cost me something because this used to be mine. I had something here. If I give it away, it's no longer mine. It cost me something. And... uh what it's going to cost you is your peace. And it's going to cost you your love and it's going to cost you your joy if you don't give it away. So this is the way of life. Um, Galatians 2.20, this is, this is the way of life. I had no idea this was going to go this long. <laughs> I didn't think I had enough time and now I'm wondering if I got enough time. <laughs> so anyway, Galatians 2.20, I really enjoyed it. I, I pulled it out of a handful of versions this morning. I really, really enjoyed the way that the complete Jewish Bible had it written. And it says, when the Messiah was executed on the stake as a criminal, I was too. So that my proud ego no longer lives. But the Messiah lives in me. And the life I now live in my body, I live by the same trusting faithfulness that the Son of God had, who loved me and who gave himself up for me. <laughs> now, if we go back over here, you know, back into Luke chapter 9, verse 24, it says, If you try to keep your life for yourself, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find true life. If I give up my life for him, I will find true life. I was clean to my life trying to make myself a millionaire, working my hands to the bone, you know what I'm saying? And I was miserable. And I was miserable. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go try that, even though I don't want to. The Lord asked me to get involved with the food pantry several times over the course of many months, and the answer was no, 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 no. No, I don't want to do it. No, 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 no. And then when I finally did it, what he asked me to do, it was so amazing. It was so amazing. So I lost my life, and he gave it to me. You understand? When you lose your life, he gives it to you. We are so, have you guys ever heard uh, the analogy of, of the little kid that's maybe holding on to the bunny rabbit, and, and they want it so bad. They just want it. They're squeezing it until it dies. We are like that with everything. We're like that with everything. We're like that with our kids. We're like that with our jobs. We're like that with our friendships. We're like that in everything. We want to hold on to it so bad. And the Lord's like, give it to me. Give it to me. And I'm like, I don't want to. And then when I give it to him, he takes it. He makes it so much better. I don't even know how he does it. And then he gives it back. And I'm like, wow, if I would have knew that so much, if I would have knew that, I would have gave it to you forever ago. My marriage was in shambles. Was in shambles. And the Lord asked me to come clean about some things, and I did. After arguing with him, of course, <laughs> for a few days. But I came clean. And he took what was broken, and he put it all back together. And he gave it back to me. And now I'm happily married. I would hear people say they're happily married, and I'm like, you don't know my wife. <laughs> I should have been going, you don't know her husband. <laughs> you know what I mean? But the Lord, he fixed it. He healed it. You know, I got friendships um, that I've lost. Um, you know, and the Lord, 
I'm still, not, I'm still in the middle of some reconciliation that I'm not ready for, but I'm trying. <laughs> um, it's crazy because these friends, they love the Lord too, and the Lord loves them. And so we're going to spend eternity together. I mean, yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> uh huh. Well, maybe the Lord can put their house like way over there and my house way over there. <laughs> and uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. And, uh, you know, the Lord had to help me to remember that he had to help me to remember that we fight not against flesh and blood, but principalities and rulers in the high places. And uh, anywho, one more time, I, I got to get going because uh, Galatians 2.20, one more time in the complete Jewish Bible, this, this is my sentence here, this is the way of life, okay? And then underneath of that, we'll do Galatians 2.20 again. It says, when the Messiah was executed on the stake as a criminal... That's what I should have done. I should have been executed on the stake as a criminal. When he was executed on the stake as a criminal, I was too, so that my proud ego no no longer lives. There's that dying to myself daily. That's picking up that cross daily. But the Messiah lives in me, and the life that I now live in my body, I live by the same trusting faithfulness that the Son of God had, who loved me, and he gave himself up for me. He gave himself up for me I used to think this was so generic, and now I want to give my life up to him. I want to allow him to live through me. You know what I'm saying? I want to be that conduit with no restrictions for him to freely flow, for, for me to love con- unconditionally humanity, which is difficult. It's difficult, but he did it with no strings attached. No strings attached. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close uh, with Colossians chapter 3, and I'm going to read it slow because <laughs> I've been doing everything slow today. And we're going to read uh, Colossians 3, uh, verses 1 through 17. I like the book of Colossians. I feel like the book of Colossians is like an overview of who Christ is. Um, It just really speaks to me. So Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 17, it says, Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits at God's right hand in the place of honor and power. Let heaven fill your thoughts. Do not think only about things down here on earth, for you died when Christ died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your real life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all of his glory. So put to death the sinful, earthful things looking, lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual sin, impurity, lust, and shameful desires. Don't be greedy for the good things of this life, for that is idolatry. God's terrible anger will come upon those who do such things. You used to do them when your life was still part of this world, but now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off your old evil nature and all of its wicked deeds. In its place, you have clothed yourselves with a brand new nature that is continually being renewed as you learn more and more about Christ who created this very nature within you. In this new life, it doesn't matter if you're a Jew or a Gentile, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbaric or uncivilized, slave or free. Christ is all that matters, and he lives in all of us. Since God shows you to be the holy people whom he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. You must make allowance for each other's faults and forgive the person who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. And the most important piece of clothing that you must wear is love. Love is what binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are all called to live in peace. And always be thankful. Let the words of Christ in all their richness live in your hearts and make you wise. Use his words to teach, to counsel each other, and to sing psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, Let it be as a representative of the Lord Jesus, all the while giving thanks through him to God the Father. So shouldering our cross daily, 
If you was to go, that was basically a summary of shouldering our cross daily. Colossians chapter three. What not to be and what to be. What to let go of and what to hold on to. <laughs> you guys should, you shouldn't do nothing. Don't let me tell you what to do. I would consider <laughs> jotting down Colossians chapter three, verses one through 17, and read them again in your own time by yourself. And ask the Father to reveal his truths to your heart. Ask him to open your eyes. Take a few minutes before you read and talk with the Lord. And ask him for his help understanding his words. He is faithful. He's true and just. His word says, you have not because you ask not. <laughs> and you don't have because when you do ask, your motives are wrong. But I think that when you're asking him to reveal his word to you, he will do that. I think that's in line with his will. Ask, seek, and knock. Ask, and it'll be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. Ask him for his revelation. He wants nothing more than to bring you into a deeper relationship with himself. I promise you that. I promise you that. So, um, with all of that being said... Who in here wants to follow Christ? Everybody but, all right, I'm just, just want to, I'm looking all over the place. All right, everybody in here wants to follow Christ. All right, well then we're going to, we're going to pray. We're going to close with a prayer real quick, and then we're going to do another, uh, another song of worship. And if anybody needs personal prayer, I want you to feel free to come up here. Or if you don't feel comfortable coming up here, turn around to your brother or sister and ask them to pray for you. We can all do that. It's really, really easy. Um, as the last worship song is going on, if you have children, please feel free to go and pick them up. And with that, we're going to pray. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for today. We thank you for your words we thank you that you give us the opportunity daily to shoulder our cross, to follow you, to lay down our selfish ambitions, Heavenly Father, and allow you to live through us. Lord, I ask that you would give us supernatural grace, supernatural wisdom. Lord, help us to let go of those things that we hold dear to us that are harming ourselves. Lord, help us to love you. Help us to love our brothers and sisters unconditionally. Lord, help us with that big word, surrender. <laughs> Lord, help us to obey. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you gave your life to atone for our sins. We thank you that you've given us the, the opportunity to be sons and daughters of you. And Lord, we're asking for your help and, and bringing to completion that which you have begun. Lord, we wanna go to the next level. We wanna be in deeper intimacy with you. We ask that in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, amen. God bless you guys. If anybody needs prayer, come get prayer.